This time I have a question from Lucas, and this question is very simple, but it's very important, especially for new filmmakers and new directors. The question of Lucas says, I'm trying to direct my own movie and I study drama and media, but I went into filmmaking as I felt it catered more to the production side of creativity, whereas as acting is seen as an expendable occupation. One thing that I feel that the actors don't really respect my ability. How do I overcome this kind of obstacle? Thank you, Lucas, for the question. First of all, your perception of acting as expendable occupation is what triggers your challenge. I know that today we all see acting all over the place, and especially when you look at a theater play or at a film and you see acting very natural, we take it for granted. We think that everybody can do it. And we say, oh, wow, it's so easy. Now, those people, professional actors, they know what they're doing. They know what relationships are built off. They know how to create a character. They study their profession in that way that makes the audience see the scene and think that it's very naturalistic, that he forgets that it's acting and he focuses on the story. And today, somehow because of many reasons, it can, a lot of reasons, many directors, they don't want to use professional actors because they want to keep the credit for themselves. They don't want people who are really strong on set to steal the focus. Many directors want to use non-actors because they have a concept of that actors don't know how to act or they think they know what method acting is and what acting is so they want people to sound natural and to be realistic it's only concepts though this terminology is not really valid it's only concepts in the mind of the director and many directors don't want though somehow they choose not to believe in acting and they think that act they treat actors as products so many actors they come they make a film or two and after that they lose their momentum, they move forward, new actors come to the scene, and they and that's how they, they create artists as products, not as an inspiration to humanity, not as a growing process that we can see and learn from, that we can get inspired by. Also, the illusion of knowledge, because it's not only ignorant directors, it's not only ignorance in general what creates this image. It is the illusion of knowledge. Many people didn't study those professions. They don't know what they are. But they have a lot of misconceptions that make them think that they know. And it is not only that the artist or the actor has to have the ability to see the small details in reality, to be able to rebuild it again on stage, to make it look realistic as if it's happening for the first time, as if it's the scene is, is uh, alive, it's not created, it's not s structured, it's not staged. It's not only that it's a talent, it is a technique. It is a profession that we study and there's a lot of guiding lines that show actors what they need to pay attention to to be able to create that scene. And this is the first thing about acting itself, about how we the, the, the significance of acting as a, prof, as a profession. The second thing is that acting is not expendable. It's not something that is happening in addition to the technical aspect, to the cameras and the sound. Acting is the essence of storytelling. Everything else is coming here to serve the story, to serve the drama, to serve the action, to serve the relationships, to serve the characters. Everything is designed to serve the substance. And you can think about it like you have, let's say, water, for example. For this substance to be able to give it to people to drink it, you need a structure to be able to put it there. And this structure, you build it, let's say, a cup in a certain shape. Only this shape can be compatible with that substance. If you put a big stone, it will not get into that structure. You need a different kind of container, a different kind of structure to be able to contain that substance. And action is a substance. And without being aware of it, without giving the, it, the, the full respect, because you can't design a structure for a non-existent substance. First of all, you need to be aware of the substance, to be aware of the essence of the, of the content, and then to find out what is the relevant technique, what is the relevant way of telling that story, what is the relevant camera movement that serves this and that in creating the drama. I know in, in, my, in my career, I so many directors get on scene and they look at the DOP and they say, I'd like to have the camera there and the dolly there and the camera there. But wait, wait a moment. 
you still didn't read the scene. You don't know what which scene we are doing now. There he has a, an assistant running after him, telling him what the, which scene is now. But he's not even knowing which scene. He's not doesn't care about the character, about the characters, the relationships, the story. What is the scene? Where? What is the movement of the characters and the act, slash actors? He he doesn't care. And then this director filmed seven hours and me on on set i always respect my director so i can give some kind of signal a, a small sign to make that there's something wrong with the picture but when the director insists that he would like to make it anyway so i trust that the director has a vision that he doesn't want me to interrupt so but in this case after seven hours of filming the director realized that there was something wrong staging the scene in that place because he didn't take it from the story. He didn't take it from the scene and the relationships and the characters. He took it out of concept. What was Where was most easy to put the camera? So we need, first of all, to treat acting not as those idiots that come on set that they need to make, the especially for new filmmakers because I know this you know, with serious directors they understand the significance of the art of acting as the substance, as the essence of everything that is happening in film. And I say acting, not actors, because that's two different things. In each film, there is action, but not in each film, there are actors. And I spoke about it also, I think, on this channel in a couple of videos. Acting is invisible. People don't have the sharp observation to see or to judge a quality of acting. So that's why normally on TV they can bring also uh, reality show stars and they can bring a lot of uh, football players and and give them roles in films and give them roles. And it's okay that those, those celebrities can make a role in a film. May even can be able maybe to make a couple of roles in a film. And if they choose to study acting later, they can make even more. But if they don't go professionally on studying the profession, they fade out. It is a pheno it's a well-known phenomenon. Since acting is invisible, many tend to think that it's, it doesn't exist. And many people get angry, especially amateur actors. They may get angry when you tell them, no, it's a profession that you need to study. So no, I have intuition. Don't question my intuition. If you question the actor's intuition who didn't study acting, you may get in conflicts. So also here, you need to choose your actors. If you have professional actors, they know what to do and they may also inspire you and work with you as a team. So when you meet actors, let's say that you didn't have a budget and that's what you chose to have non-professional actors, people who didn't study acting, amateur actors, improvisational, improvisation groups, actors, you need really to differentiate because it's going to be a challenge. They don't know how to interact on set. What is the professional relationship, the hierarchy of the system? And also they will not be easily guided to your vision. I'm saying in case that you are a professional director, that you have a vision and you know how to communicate it with your actors, actors, non-professional actors, they have difficulties to process the data that you're giving them and to apply it in action. And uh, that's why you, many directors here begin to trick the actors in, in certain ways that I don't agree with because sometimes it can get you opposite results. But that, that's why I don't go too much on the on the amateur area. So let's say that you work with professional actors who study their profession, who know what they're doing and in this place, in case that in that place you faced disrespect or you faced challenges, you need to do a couple of things. First of all, to know what's the difference between professional and amateur. Don't you ever use amateur interaction with professional actors. It means that don't go and say, don't trick them or cheat them or pretend as if you put a scene that they didn't expect and you bring things that that out of to think that you are more intelligent and you're more genius than the actors that they should not know no 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 they need to know everything what's going on on, on the script has to be written they need to know what's going on and they will help you maximize the potential of that scene they will not go against you they have no nobody has an interest to destroy your scene on the contrary they will think with you and they will cooperate and it will serve the scene not go against it. So they need to know what's going on. And when it's going to the, uh, this is the professional aspect to communicate with a professional language. But since we're working in teams and we are human beings, so there may be some 
chemistry going on and some uh, relationships that may influence the working relationships. So it's very important to stay objective oriented so you know what you want. Everything leads to your goals, the professional goals. Anything that is going to personal interaction, let go and go back, focus on the, the business, on the objective. Um, and again, communication. Communication is also a technique. There is, it's a language. It is something that you study. If you have more talent of communication, you have more of charm, that would be great. That's fine. But many times I see directors use the language of metaphors and the language of uh, think that you are like this and the thing that you are uh, water in, in, the, in, the, in the ocean or, or many ways of trying to describe what they want from the actor that makes the actors more confused and not really knowing what, they, what the director wants from them. So uh, normally professional actors don't need too much direction because somehow when they read the lines, they read the text, they read the story, they already have a vision of what they should do. And here, normally, when you're working with a professional actors, they will be they will be in alignment with your vision. But if there is something that you see that you want it, and you see that it's necessary for the whole scene and for the whole story, for the whole film, to change attitude or to work on a different character or to design the relationship between a specific character and another in a, to a different way. So there's a lot of ways... A lot of places that you may have a vision that you need to order from the, the actors and they and actors who are professional they'll be flexible enough to immediately give you what you want and if not immediately they may need to work on it a little bit but they will they will give you what you want so when you have a clear vision you know how to communicate it with your actors you also objective oriented means that you are professional in the way that you work and you don't use any of those misconceptions and, and uh, weird uh, concepts that are coming from uh, cheap books, there is no reason that anybody would disrespect you. And if you still face challenges, write me again and specify your case, and I'll make another video about it. Thank you for the question, Lucas. Thank you, everybody, for watching.